the privilege of introducing Allison, who again, if we ever had a Hall of Fame, Mike ever decided to do a Hall of Fame for Max Doc, you know, you'd, you'd so many potential candidates that you'd have for the first class. There's no getting around it, right? You look at like Dave Ginsburg, who's got a track record of producing, an un unblemished record of producing content here as a speaker. Chuck Joyner, of course, who we just had. But though clearly the person that would go in on the first class is Allison. She's <laughs> such a presence here. She was the uh, opening, sp no, actually Chuck was opening speaker for Max Stock One, but she, you've been, at Max Stock, except the one year you beamed in when you had your <laughs> grandchild that was here. The very first people who found out that Steve and I were going to be grandparents were Barry Folk and, and uh, Mike Potter. Before we told our family. <laughs> because we found out, oh my gosh, he's going to be born right when Max Stock was going to be. That's right. Allison couldn't stay away. We beamed her in from California. <clears throat> you did your presentation. This was pre-pandemic, so this was uh, there. So. You know, through the years, getting to know Allison has been phenomenal. You know, I always say if you're putting together a team, right? I don't know if anybody ever watched the old school show, The A-Team, right? There is no doubt about it that Allison would be Hannibal, right? Because her, her level of confidence, right, of going in. I mean, everyone can go out and meet a person and they have this kind of, this, this vibe that they're going after Moby Dick in the rowboat and they take the tartar sauce with them. And there's no <laughs> doubt about it that anybody who spends five minutes with Allison knows that that's exactly the person you're with. If you're on a project at work, I'd want Allison on the project with me. You need a Mac stock speaker, no doubt about it, it's Allison. Anything you wanna do, you just feel more confident when you're around Allison. It's a privilege, I consider you a friend and it's been an honor all these years. So with no further ado. Thank I'll, you, Brian. I'll give you a hug. So how about Brian though? Jeez, Brian, Brian has been here all along. He was a, a kind of in the background for the first few years. He'd just kind of sneak up and do something, plug something in, and he's become more and more a part of it and, and a good friend, absolutely. I'm like Steve Martin in, uh, what was that movie that, that with the guy that was in the back, Rupert, that was in the back room? <laughs> Mike let me out, so. <laughs> yeah, <you know>. finally. <laughs> Allison, it's all yours, thanks. All right, let's see, did Kelly make, Kelly didn't make it here, so. One of uh, Kelly's favorite stories to tell is that uh, during Max Stock one year, my pants started to fall down because I'm, I'm wearing two of these little uh, transmitter things. So I wanted to show off that I'm wearing a belt this year. It's an improvement I heard about that some people know about those. So, um, but I was hoping Kelly would be here to make fun of me. That would be fun. All right, so level up. When I thought of this topic, I, I thought about what can we do with our brains to actually uh, do more and, and uh, take care of our brains? And so the first thing I wanted to ask you is, and I asked this in my other's talk, is anybody in here getting older? <laughs> Show hands. All right, almost everybody. Okay, now you hope you're gonna get older because that's better than the alternative, right? And the reason I ask that is because we're gonna talk a little bit about neuroplasticity. I am not a professor of psychology who studies memories, but I know someone who is. This is Dr. Marianne Gary. She's a professor out of the University of Waikato in New Zealand and frequent guest on my show. Why is my, that's odd. Okay, hang on, a notification came up telling me to present at MacStock even though I'm in Do Not Disturb, or at least I thought I was. So Marianne uh, studies memories and reads a lot of them, big, long, fancy scientific papers, and she often tries to make me read them, but I just make her tell me what it is they're, uh, they're talking about. If you, if you get Alzheimer's, you're, you're screwed, right? We don't have any solution for that. So nothing I'm gonna say has anything to do with Alzheimer's. But as we age, we, we lose neuroplasticity and we need to fight our, or we can actually combat that and, and do basically brain maintenance. So the less your brain changes while you age, structurally or biochemically, the less your cognitive ability will decline. And many studies have proven that, that if we do th learn things that are extremely hard for us and we master them, you can actually slow the cognitive aging. And it's not like you, you, pick, you say, okay, I'm gonna learn the guitar and you, and you learn to play Mary Had a Little Lamb and you set it down and say, good, I'm, I'm good. My brain's gonna stay good. No, you have to actually master it. One of the reasons uh, I started the uh, Programming by Stealth podcast with Bart Bouchatz was because programming's really hard for me. 
And I can tell you the days that it, we were in the middle of some deep JavaScript stuff and I was slamming my head on the table going, it's too hard, I can't do this. I would pick it back up and go, no, Marianne said, this is why I'm, I'm doing this. This is what you should be doing. So do th think about the things you can work on that are hard for you and level up. And, and we're going to talk about some examples of things I do. Um, and maybe that's going to help us slow this cognitive aging. So that's, that's kind of the, the purpose of why I'm teaching, going to talk about this. She actually gave me this citation of exactly who said all that. <laughs> so the main thing is to keep learning. You want to keep trying to push your brain and try to learn to do new things. And I, I wrote this up and I was like, well, why is anybody going to be here if they don't already want to learn? So I probably didn't have to talk you into that part, right? <laughs> That's why you're here. I'm going to talk about a bunch of different things to try to learn. And this is creaking right here, right here, every time I step back. What I don't want you to do is try something for 20 seconds and go, oh, I hate that. I want you to try these things. If you don't already do them, try them and give it a good college try. Give it, you know, like a month of trying to do it, not 20 seconds. So like uh, when reverse scrolling first came out on the Mac, how many people tried it for 20 seconds and went, oh, I hate that, that's stupid, and turn it off? All right, yeah, Kaylee, I saw you doing it yesterday. <laughs> Say, so, come on, come on. No, but that was, that was a hard thing, right? You're like, whoa, that's backwards. I can't do it that way. Well, yeah, actually you could. If you gave it a good college try, you could do it that way because you learned it to do it the other way. And that's something to mess with your brain, right? Try doing that. And just, it'll drive you crazy for a little while. But uh, Jill, you're still doing it the wrong way, right? Right. Yeah, right. yeah, I thought so. I saw you doing that too. <laughs> Uh, okay, so when you get on your iPad, you go the opposite direction and it's fine, isn't it? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Why is that different? Yeah, but, but it doesn't, the point is, if you tried it and gave up, you didn't do that thing that I'm trying to talk about here. And I think that's probably the, the most, the example that everybody can relate to. So I'm going to, you know, change is annoying. Made an executive decision. So made an executive decision not to learn to do it. That's all I'm saying. So you can still choose that. I'm not saying you have to do what I'm saying. But in every one of these, there are going to be things where you're going to go, oh, I tried that and I don't like that. I don't, I'm, not, I'm never going to be able to do that. Well, maybe you can. Maybe you can give it a try and try these things and become more efficient on your Mac. So I'm going to be giving you uh, some uh, examples. And what I'm just trying to do is, is stimulate and give you inspiration of things that, that maybe you can try to do. But maybe there's other stuff that you've kind of hesitated to try. And you're like, well, OK, I'm really going to try to learn this. I'm going to do my best to you know, fight that cognitive aging. I mean, I didn't start with that many brain cells. I, I cannot afford to have any of these go away. <laughs> the first example, um, this is a quote from Dan Morin. Uh, he said, quit the app before it quits you. <laughs> yeah, it, Kaylee, by the way, Kaylee is the anti-example of every single thing I'm going to talk about. She's already, you know, she's there running a... a I'm, I, I'm the hold on to a Mac Mini that runs High Sierra, so you have 32-bit access. But. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we may have to quiet her. <laughs> but this example came up. Um, it, it, the reason he said this was it's... it's it's tempting when an app quits, uh, it quits on you to stick with it and hold on to it and really try to keep it alive. If you, I remember years and years ago, there was a, a database program, I forget what it was called, but it, it, they stopped making it. And uh, the people who switched right away, who went out and found something new that they didn't like, it wasn't the same, it didn't do what they wanted it to do. What was it? Bento. Bento, maybe, I feel like it was, I feel it was, yeah, okay. Well, looks like there's a lot of examples, but the, the main point is that the people who switched on day one had a lot of people to talk to. Everybody was talking about, well, did you try this? Did you try this? How's that work? No, it can't do this. I need to try that one. And there's all these people talking online. You've got ideas of how to fix it. And the people who waited, they're that, they're that person looking around for a SCSI zip drive because they never move their files, you know? And, and so if you, if you switch just right when it happens, you're going to have to change eventually. Do it when everybody else is. And that's really, really hard. And I was a perfect example of this. Mike Schmitz actually used, used my line. He said, RIP iThoughts. So iThoughts is a mind mapping tool that I actually taught at MaxDoc a few years ago. I did a lot of work to choose which one I was going to use. And I loved this one. And I, I mean, I was just a maestro at it. It worked. It was fantastic. And Craig Scott just one day goes, yeah, I'm done. And he just like closed the lid and did a mic drop and walked away. He didn't sell it. He didn't do anything. He just said, yeah, it'll work for a while. Good luck. 
that day I went out and started to look for a replacement and decide what I was going to use next. I, I knew it still works today. I can open all my files, but doing it now, I can find out what do I still need to go back and get. To, and and uh, actually, the way I, I one of the main criteria I ch for choosing my node to replace it was that my node can natively open iThoughts documents, so I don't have to go through the 336 uh, mind maps I have and open each one up and save as and open up and save as. You know, export to OPML or anything. I can just open them natively in in my node. This was really hard for me. This was a beloved application. I'm still not really good at, at, at my node, but I changed right then and I wrote an article about it. Now there's people chatting on my, on my blog post about it saying, hey, did you try this one? Did you try this one? Hey, have you figured out how to do this? And now I'm with a community of people who are figuring it out at the same time. You do this two years from now when there's an upgrade to the OS and, and you're just going to have to go talk to Kay Kaylee to get the old version. Uh, yeah. I, I would argue She says the benefit of waiting is you get all of the articles by the time you go do it, if you can find them. Marina just said the trick is to get Allison to switch first, write the article, and then just do it. <laughs> there you go. But it's, it was hard. It's hard to learn a new tool. Uh, now, I happen to like learning new tools, so it's maybe a little easier for me, but I'm having a, you know, what I really need is for Jill McKinley to, to, uh, to switch tools and, and use that tool, because I've used uh, Hindenburg for a decade before I recommended it to her, and every time I'm stuck, I just ask her how to do stuff in Hindenburg, because she learns everything about a tool. All right, here's another example. I think life is too short to spend it typing. Anybody, anybody love to just type all the time, extra typing? But I mean, extra unnecessary typing. It's, I, I like to type. I type 5,000 words a week, but I don't want to do typing I don't have to do. So there, you all know, I'm sure, about built-in text replacements. And I want to talk about the kinds of things, if, if you've not really used them, if you've never used Text Expander, or you, better yet, you tried and it was too hard to remember. Because you have to think up some sort of keystroke in order to cause these text replacements to happen. If you tried it and went, no, I don't like it. it it's, it's too hard for me. I can't remember the keystrokes, Steve. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I am going to get him to do this one day. It's going to happen. But the, the, uh, the first two things I would do is put your, oh, slides, there we go. The first two things I would do is I would put your name in and I would put in your email address because you type these all the time. If you just stop right here, just do those two, you're going to save yourself a lot of time. You're typing them into web forms all the time. Why type your name? So I have, a, I have a snippet for my first name, one for my last name, one for my full name. And I use those eight times a day. I mean, I, I use them constantly. And think of all the characters that I'm not having to type. Um, once you get the hang of those, the other th category is things that are hard to, to capitalize, like, you, like did the lowercase m in Mac Mini. Why did they do that? They did, that's just because they hate us. And Mac OS, the lowercase m, it makes me crazy. But uh, no silicast, I forget that there's a capital C in the middle. I type it lowercase if I type it by hand. But I haven't typed no silicast in, in, I don't know, 17 years because I put it in as a snippet because I didn't want to have to do it again. Um, if you're like Dave Hamilton and you have trouble remembering the name of an operating system because it starts with an S just like the last one and you just can't remember it. Oh, ends in an A. Too. How can you possibly remember this name? When at WWDC every year, when Apple announces an, uh, the new name, before I type it the first time, I actually do Text Expander. But it, same thing, I go into Text Expander and I create a, a, a Text Expander snippet for it. So I only type it once. I type it the first time in there, and I never type it again, especially with Sequoia. I mean, I'll, I'll give them the spelling is a little rough. Just take all the vowels and put them in a word with an S in, in it and maybe a, a Q. So <clears throat> that's the kind of word that I definitely do, things that are hard to spell. Uh, speaking of hard to spell, <coughs> my co-host is Bart Bouchot. I have no idea how to spell his name. Uh, two S's, two T's, two C's in the middle. I actually do not know how to spell that word. 
it's a text expander snippet. It's comma BB, because I type it all the time, and I'm not going to ever learn, know how to spell that. Uh, so think of things that are hard for you to spell or weird capitalization that you might get wrong. Uh, I do stuff like Facebook is the B capitalized, LinkedIn, the I is capitalized. I, I don't even remember which one's which. So I just put those in, because I don't ever want to have to type those again. Yeah, Jill. Ooh. <laughs> for the recorded audience, Jill just said, wouldn't learning how to spell Bart's name be a hard thing for you to do? Yeah? Good call. Good call. I will, I will have to give you that one. Maybe that should be a challenge. By next year, we'll have a spelling contest, and you guys can ask me how to spell Bouchot. All right, I'm getting rid of that text expander snippet. I'm just going to type it for the next year. Then get, no, I'll do it for I'll do it for a month because I said oh, you got to try something for a month, right? Okay. Man, I don't like her. <laughs> <clears throat> when you really get into this, you can start having some fun, like uh, the uh, emoticons, right? I got this one from um, uh, Micah Sargent suggested it. Is he he just types S shrug, and it does the shrug emoji, and I always like that or shrug uh, emoticon. I always like that one. So that was now we're just getting playful and having some fun. You can do. Uh, um, Emojis too, so I've got like think is, is, is this one and I don't have to type it again. And I know it'll come up on screen if you want it to, but uh, I don't want to type it. I don't want to go look it up. I don't want to go look it up in the little picker. So just in case anybody doesn't know where, uh, where these are, we're going to do a video. Let's see, did it auto start or not? Yeah. So I think I have to hit play, one button here to play, right? There we go. OK, scroll all the way down to the bottom of, and go to keyboard. And I always go directly to keyboard shortcuts. And that's the wrong place. You want to go to, what did it just say? <laughs> Text replacements. Thank you. I can't read anything at this angle. So you, all you do is you put in this, the, the short characters you want to type, and then you put in the long one. So I put in MS semicolon, and then uh, max.conference and expo. And that's how easy it is to put something in, like max.conference and expo. That's way too many characters. I don't want to have to type that. Yes, Dr. Dream. Will you insist that the majority start using this for AI and quit writing about some guy named Al? <laughs> <laughs> OK, I didn't even understand that, but I don't understand most of what he says. <laughs> uh, so once you've set one of those up, you've got it available to you. I, I chose early on to use a semicolon to close off my little snippets. It's a bad decision. I did it because I didn't know what semicolons were for. And I'm not, I'm not joking. I, I don't ever, you will never see a semicolon in my writing because I'm never really clear. There's Kelly. You missed my joke with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you do it again? I was just explaining why, why I, uh, how my uh, pants are holding up this year because I brought a belt this time. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't want to be another gift on the internet. <laughs> So uh, once, once, you have these, once you have these set up, then uh, you know, text replacements, we're going to switch over and open up text edit. And uh, I just typed MS semicolon. Oh, I was explaining why not to do semicolon, but I'll come back when this finishes. You can, do, you can hit a space bar, you can hit a tab, or you can actually just touch on the, uh, on the expanded snippet. Now, I feel like that's an extra step that you have to touch it or, or hit space or whatever. That, that's a little bit extra for me uh, in looking at, uh, at the way these work. So uh, text, ex or text replacements, they're right there. Anybody, who, who doesn't use text replacements? Got a few people. You willing to try it for a little, for a month? Put, put, okay. Okay, he says he doesn't use it because he doesn't use, he uses text expander. Right, a text replacement utility. Yeah. So let's, let's go uh, level up then to, and talk about Text Expander a little bit. And um, let me explain why I use those. I don't think I can control scroll, can I? Shoot, can I? Not, I can't control scroll, can I, to zoom in on this? I thought, oh, yeah, I can. But I, I see what Dave was talking about. I have no idea where my cursor is. I, anybody see my? Oh, there it is. OK, good. This is an example of the kinds of crazy things that you can do with uh, if you go to uh, use Text Expander. You can put dates and times in there. This is a, the, it, it'll put in the current date and time. So all I've done is drag down from the little, uh, there's a little calendar icon there, and there's a little clock. And you can just drag these little pieces down in, and, or, or click, and they come in to put in the year, the date, the month. And it, you can choose how to format it. 
This one, um, when I'm doing my screencast online videos, you, ca you can't keep screencast or screen flow files in, in uh, Dropbox. It, they get borked, something goes wrong with them, so it's really dangerous to do that. But I want to have a, 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 the ability to get to those files from other computers, and I need to be able to make sure I'm backing it up. So I work along, I, do, I work for you know, 10, 15 minutes on, on uh, the screencast and locally, and then I drag a copy of it over to, to, uh, Discord, or to Dropbox, and then I use this text expander snippet, it's SCODD, and it, puts, it takes the, the date and puts it at the front of the, uh, of the file, or at the, yeah, the front of the file name. So now I've got all my files in order and I know what time that was to, to be able to go back to it. So that's kind of really leveling up doing something a little more interesting than just, you know, typing MS semicolon to type max.conference and expo. Does uh, anybody use that, that feature? A couple of people, okay. Yeah? So let's go up a notch one more. Oh, good. This, uh, let's see, where do I want to be? Oh, this is going to be hard. Oh, I know what that one was. Sorry. That's my signature. My, the, uh, you can, in Text Expander, you can do multi line things. You can, have, uh, you can have rich text. You can have images. So you can do a lot more with it. Terry Austin drew those little feet during Macworld about 15 years ago and, and sent me the file. And I put up my signature, and it's been there ever since. Uh, but I can put all of that into, that into that text expander snippet, which is a lot more than what you can do with, uh, with uh, the text replacements. So let's go up. Let's level up again. We can go even higher. This one is going to be really interesting to see. Oh, good, good. If I just don't touch it, it's going to stay where it is. I, I, the, when I create a new blog post for, uh, or a, a, yeah, new blog post for the NoSilla cast, I want to start it off by saying N, NC, the hashtag, and then I want the episode number. And you can see it says dash uh, episode number, and that's, that's it, a query. It's going to ask me for the episode number. Now, it would be really good if I got that episode number right every time. I have not yet cracked the code. Rosemary Archer actually made me a text ex or made me a uh, shortcut that I can ask my phone when was what was the last episode of the No Silicast, but it's broken right now. So I, yeah, I got it, the episode wrong. Chit chat across the pond was wrong last week. Happens all the time. But anyway, so I type in a random number because I can't can't keep track. But you can see that that episode number is all throughout that because I say at the beginning of my show, "Hi, this is Allison Sheridan of the No Silicast Podcast." Blah blah blah. Uh, and then I, I have the episode number repeated again uh, in there. You'll also see something that says snippet. God, what is even? I don't even know what the snippet. N C B L E N C L. I think that's no silicast blog post enclosure is what I'm trying to tell myself. That's another snippet. So N C B L E N C L is uh, is actually a whole other snippet that does a bunch of stuff. So you don't see all the complexity that's actually going to happen here because it's in another snippet. Uh, say, you can by embedding snippets into the same document or into the same uh, bigger snippet, then you only have to fix things one place. So, for example, um, eh, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, but if you like, I, let's say my signature was in here. If I ever decided I wanted to change out the graphic from Terry Austin, I could, and it would fix it in here too. It would fix it wherever I use the signature. So you, you only have to change it one place. So think about making smaller snippets and then building them together so you change them in one place. So we're going to run a little video, and you're going to see, uh, let's see, I better scroll back out, uh, find out where my cursor is. OK. We're going to do a demo here. It's going to be very exciting. All right. And I forget which ones I told it to do on, on all right. I'm going to type NC. It's just asked me for the, for the episode number, and I hit OK. And it's filled in my whole blog post. So that thing's ready to go. So now I know what all the different pieces I've got to do. And uh, <laughs> this, uh, you can see every place that I've got that date. I've got it in the name of the, uh, the, the transcript file that gets auto-generated. It already knows where it's going to go. Um, it's, it's all throughout is that date is really important. The only bad part is sometimes I forget and I start my show notes on a Wednesday, so it's the wrong date. But I know that it's five places I have to change it because I've done it so many times that way. But, you know, it gets me there. Um, any questions on that? Those are really easy to build. Yeah, Brett? I don't want to blow anything up, but have you seen TextBlaze? I don't want to blow anything up, but have you seen TextBlaze? No. It, cool. Is it another text expander kind of thing? <clears throat> I 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. I'm using both right now. What could possibly go wrong? You know, we were talking about bartender, and a lot of people came up and said, oh, my God, you're still using bartender? After I mentioned that, uh, I've been experimenting with a couple of others. The one I really like is called ICE. It's an open source product, and it's an active development. I accidentally was running them both at the same time. <laughs> Things get real weird. You can't find any, I mean, just menu bars are disappearing and everything. And then, but you got to get into the menu bar to find it to kill it. So you <clears throat> probably could do that with Activity Monitor, but uh, yeah, text blaze, eh? check that out. Look, I got something new to learn. Uh, Jill, you're going to learn it and tell me how to do it? I already uh, read the documents and I'm on it. Okay, <laughs> Jill's already read the documents. She's on it. She's got it. <clears throat> That's good. Another thing that life's too short for is using the cursor. I can't stand to take my mouse, my cursor, my trackpad, whatever, and go all the way up to a menu and pull all the way down. It just drives me crazy, as crazy as, as clicking on my trackpad. I, I, I can't stand it. So I'd like to encourage you to look at learning some keyboard shortcuts. And I know I have learned that there are people in this world who don't think like I do, and keyboard shortcuts are hard to remember. But if I can get you to do a couple of them, there's a couple that are just really, really handy that I think might get whet your appetite for learning more. So, um, oh, there, that's what it was. But let, so let's just do some baby steps. The uh, shockingly, did you know command comma opens up settings in every app? Except for Electron apps, right. I, was, I, I actually had in my notes, well-behaved application. Electron apps, yeah, they, it doesn't. But uh, I don't know, why couldn't it? It works in Notion? Okay, so, 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 yeah, so it, the, the developer has to actively do it probably is what, so well-behaved, we'll go with well-behaved apps. But I was shocked when I learned this. Don McAllister was doing one of his fabulous screencast online videos, and I'm watching, he's just like, and he says, okay, I'm gonna go up to settings, so I'm gonna use command comma because that works in every app. And I was like, how long has that been true? I was shocked, I did not know that for the longest time. That was probably like five years ago I learned it, and I was like, man, that could have saved me a lot of time. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, a couple of things you can do in browsers that are, uh, that are really, really useful. I keep asking, anybody getting any older here, Command Plus increases the, the font size and, and grows everything on the screen. Command Minus decreases it. Uh, didn't get double digit there. C Command Minus brings it, makes it smaller. But it, you know, if you're at a website that's, uh, all websites are designed by 17 year olds apparently. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know, everybody in this room would vote for things to maybe be a little bit bigger, but you can make it any size you want with the, the command plus and minus. And then if you get it all weird, command uh, zero puts it back to the original. So you, you get it all borked up, then you just go, okay, command zero, get it back to what it's supposed to look like. Um, now I'm saying command minus, but you, I'm gonna do a little demo here and it's gonna look like, or sorry, command plus. You're gonna see command equals in the video. That's because the equals is under the plus, but you don't have to hit shift but everybody calls it, think of it as command plus and minus. So you don't have to hit the shift to do it. Um, the other pair are uh, command down arrow and command up arrow. That's really good in browsers. It works in things like, uh, like uh, preview and it's, it, that's another really handy one. I'm always needing to go to the bottom of something, back up to the top of something. So let's try these out and see how they look. Whoop. There we go. Is that going to autoplay? Yeah, okay, so I got to go all the way up to here and I got to go all the way down and got to get all the way to get to settings. That's too, that's too hard. Let's close that. And I'm just going to do command comma, boom. Did you want to see that again? It was really fast. Command comma. <laughs> way faster. Look how much time I'm saving here. Let's see. I think I go to the next one now. All right. So now let's look at, we can go up to the view menu and we can go over and over and down and over and get that and zoom in one. Or we can hit command plus, 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 plus. Look at that. Can't read anything, but you know. So now let's look at the, uh, the opposite. We can go command minus, 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 and we can make it way too small. Or we can do command, oh, I did it, I did it twice. Command zero just, whoop, uh, 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 you went too far. Okay. Oh, now it's anarchy. How do I make it go? There we go. Command minus, 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 and then does it do it on its own? I should have, t there, command zero brought it all back, all the way back. So that's not very many to remember, right? Everybody, can everybody at least remember to use command comma? 
save yourself, especially if you're using a scrolly mouse thing or so, you know, don't ever do that. All right, uh, hard to tell. Oh, and this is command up arrow and then command down arrow. So pretty easy stuff. Just a couple of things to remember. Now we've probably beaten this one into the, into the ground. Uh, I taught this one yesterday, but you can zoom your entire screen using control scroll. And you saw me do that. You saw it all zoom in there. That's using control scroll. It is a fabulous feature. It's been around for a very long time. And uh, so if I hold down the control key right now and I scroll in, I can zoom in and show you things that are on screen, especially if you're doing presentations in a, in a place with the, the lighting is reflecting off like we've got and the font's too small. We could do every speaker next year, control scroll up to stuff that you're talking about because we can't read anything from the back rows. Uh, let's show you how to set that up. We're gonna go, let's see, does it autoplay? No. Whoop. Wait, maybe it was playing. There's a video there, isn't it? Why is it not playing? Nope. Why is it not playing? Oh no, because it's in a really obscure place. What, what's that? Uh, you say hit spacebar? K. K? Okay. It's not doing it. You know what? We're going to live demo it. Uh, no, no, we're going to. Did it start to play? Oh, OK. Let's just jump it up settings. Because this one is in such an obscure place. Oh, God. OK. Sorry. Yeah. I, I'm going to, but I can't see it. The, the angle is, I, I'm getting like, like the, uh, the sign of the angle. I've got like this much of it. it uh, okay, well, I'm going to zoom in and hopefully I can, I don't know if I can do this without mirroring. So tell me where to find, where's displays? I got a mirror, seriously. Down? Down? Yeah. I literally can't read anything. With, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hang on, hang on. I'm smarter than this. Bring it to where I can see it. <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to go to use as mirror. Okay. All right, now we can both see. All right, so this one's in a really obscure place. Okay, everybody guess, where do you think it is? Accessibility. Thank you. It's gonna be in accessibility because everything good is in accessibility. So then we're gonna go into Zoom. And right here, so this is, see about how far down it is, this blue switch here says, use scroll gesture with modifier keys to Zoom. You turn that on and then you choose a keystroke. The default is control, and I use that one, and it, it works fine for me. You can choose something else if you like. <clears throat> now that's, the way, the way I do it, what you're seeing is you're seeing the entire, the entire screen zooming in and out as I'm doing that, right? If you go here to this uh, drop down, you can choose to do split screen or picture in picture, and they're kind of weird. So let me show you what split screen looks like. See, it's like, uh, that's off to the side. And, uh, okay, somebody reminded me yesterday of how to move it. Um, oh, I know. Size and location here. You can take this and you can drag it and put it at the top or the right or the bottom. And you can change the size of it. But I find that just like a super weird way to look at where I am. I, I don't favor that one at all. So uh, let's control zoom back out. So let's show, show one other. Another one is picture in picture, and this one's uh, I think is a little more useful. I still don't like it, but wherever my cursor is, I can control scroll, and now you can see exactly what's under my cursor. So that might be something where you just try to use one little thing. Um, the the use case I did, every, a lot of people were at the Tiny Tips workshop, so I realize this is a little reductive, but it's such a useful tip. I'm doing it twice. Um, the one I use it for is maps. You know how you go into maps and you can't read the you can't read what's on the map. Oh, the internet's so bad, I'll never be able to see it. But okay, so I'm gonna read the name of this street. Anybody need to read the name of that street? Okay, you know, I, I, this will be fine. Let me just use the, little, uh, use the little plus button. I'll zoom in. Oh no, they made it smaller, they made it smaller, they made it smaller. I'm never gonna be able to read that. But with control scroll, I can go up, the, uh, there it is, Three Oaks Road. So I use it in maps all the time. That is like, my, my big deal is to do it in maps, so. All right. Yes. Since we're repeating, I guess I'll repeat what I said, which is this also works on iPad and iOS. 
and it's great if you have like four by three content on a streaming service. If you want to, if it's pillar boxed or window boxed, you can zoom it in to fill the whole iPad screen. It's an accessibility zoom, and it's a three finger double tap, swipe up, swipe down. But it, I, I have it on both my devices, and it works great. All right, Kaylee Sand, it works on the iPad. You go in accessibility zoom, and it's a three finger double tap, tap, double tap, tap swipe. Down. Wow, that's going to use another part of my brain. <laughs> yeah, I see everybody in the room's going. <laughs> okay. That also works in like maps, for example. You can. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm going to definitely turn that one on. If you really want to get crazy, you can go into advanced, and I'm not even going to zoom in on this because there's all these different things you can do with how you have it zoomed to make it the way you like it. And you don't have to remember where all this is because once it's set, you're done. You don't have to do it. You don't have to go back in there. All right, now I got, oh, I got to go back to displays. Got to go back and say, how's my time doing? Oh, I'm doing good. All right, stop mirroring. All right, so now I got to get rid of this and I got to find the button. Okay, I swear, I keep turning on uh, do not disturb and it keeps coming back on. Does that, is that the play button? All right. So the next thing I, I uh, would encourage you to start to try to do is document what you know. So I, I look like a genius that I know all these things I can do, but the only reason I know how to do this stuff is because I write it all down. I take, I take screenshots, I annotate them, and I, and I keep those in a document that I can go back to because I literally, I, I'm not kidding, how many times I've gone to Google, how do you blah, 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 and the answer says podfeed.com. Just like, <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> Like, I, I not only don't remember it, I don't remember that I knew it at one time. So, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the, uh, I automate a lot of stuff too. Sorry, excuse me. I don't remember how to mute this, but I have to cough. <clears throat> Apologies for that. He did teach me. I didn't listen in class. I should have written it down. <clears throat> so, the first thing is to take screenshots. And there's a built-in screenshot utility. In, if you go into Applications Utilities, there's a built-in screenshot.app. And so at the very least, you can open it like that. You don't even have to remember the keystroke of how to, how to get into it. Uh, and it's got uh, like five different modes it can go through. The first one you see here is, the, um, is to capture the entire screen. And then uh, it, it can capture the active window. It can do the area. And then the, the next two are actually video. That's record a video window or the one you see here, which is to record a, an area on the video. So that's all built in. You can make yourself a little video of how to do something. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of different options about, you can't read that from there, but like, where do you want to save it? You know, what kind of, do you want to do a timer on it before you start ca capturing? And that's all built right into Mac OS. And if you do get the hang of doing keystrokes, you can assign keystrokes. These are the, the standard ones are already set up. So that is one way to do it. Now, a screenshot by itself a lot of times isn't going to tell you, like, like if you were to try to show, record, where do I turn on that control zoom thing? You need to annotate to say, click this button, click that button, click that button. So to do, uh, to do annotations, if you have to, you can use preview. I find preview just, I don't know, the annotations drive me crazy. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Uh, go up to the top, there you go. That, that little toolbar there, it doesn't even open when you first open it. And I've, I've tried to write uh, uh, keyboard maestro macros to have that automatically open when I get in, because there, there is a way to do it, but it, it, I never got it to work. Um, I discovered in, uh, let's see, did I do that in the tiny tips yesterday? Yeah, there's actually, uh, there are keystrokes to open the different, um, the different tools. Like if you do a command O, it drops an oval on the screen. I didn't know that until I was messing around with keystrokes. So you can actually, I mean, R I would imagine would probably be rectangle. But I hate the fact that I have to then go grab the corners and move them. I would rather just click and drag to draw an oval or click and drag to draw a, a, a rectangle. So when you get better at doing some, some, uh, some screenshots and you start to get irritated with the, uh, the utility of, of preview to be able to annotate, I am really fond of a tool called Shotter. It's only eight bucks. The developer is really responsive. He's a funny guy. He's great. His name's Max. And it, the annotations are delightful. 
I mean, they're, they're playful. They're, they're not silly playful. They're just enough fun. You know, they're, they're not like, wow, things that, you know, Guy Searle would put on or, you know, with a big, you know, bam. You know, it's not doing that. It's just nice, nice annotations. Um, but I also use CleanShot X, which uh, channeling my inner pilot Pete is also available on Setapp. You work for Setapp, by the way? Yeah, they do, they do have a commission program. They have a, they, yeah, so uh, you got to do that. But uh, 29 bucks or you can get it in Setapp. And this is much more capable, uh, capable than Shotter. Shotter is nice for my simple screenshots. But you can even record video with this. And uh, they've got a, uh, a cloud library where you can upload stuff to their cloud and then send somebody a link. And I use this to show developers where a problem is. Because not only do I call write to every uh, podcaster when they make a mistake. I write to every developer all the time saying, hey, you should fix this. This doesn't work right. So uh, anyway, I've met a lot of nice people that way. Uh, but I use the, the, that, that video. <laughs> I use that video capability for developers because a lot of times it's like, oh, I didn't realize you were clicking there because the video is, uh, is going to tell them. Uh, I got three minutes. All right. Next question is, where do you document this stuff? What do you do with all these screenshots? Because if you just got a single screenshot, you can save in a little folder and you're good. But if you got a bunch of screenshots and you've annotated them, where are you going to put them? And um, the worst place to put them is in um, Apple Notes. Because I, mean, I think this video is going to play. That, I've dropped in screenshots. This is where I was trying to remember how to do something with my thermostat. And look at how big those are. They're huge. And does anybody know how to shrink a screenshot once it's already in, into Apple Notes? I don't think you can. I don't think you can. If anybody can find that, there's a stump the geek. I don't know whether, uh, it, but it, it's just terrible. It's the worst possible place to put it. If you have to, you can. Uh, I use a little tool called Bear. It's 30 bucks a year. It's, a, it's a, um, a markdown editor. And I can just grab the corner and shrink it. So that's the, that's the exact same document, except I've grabbed the corners and made them shrink, shrink up to where they're a reasonable size. Um, Bear is kind of nice because it's sort of a database -y sort of thing. So you can have a, you know, here's my screenshot library or here's, you know, here's my, remember this. You can have them all together in each note. But even if you don't use, uh, want a dedicated app like that, I mean, you can, you can put them in Keynote if you want to. Uh, you can put them in Pages. You put them in, in Google Docs. You can, I mean, if you have to, you could even use Microsoft Word. So there's a lot better places to put them. Um, if you really want to level up, there's a tool called Folga from folga.me. And uh, Folga, it means uh, follow me. This means follow me. And uh, so it's to create guides. So I document stuff that I do. Like I did the, uh, the Homebridge thing to set up a, uh, a dummy switch that then can control all of our home automation. Like uh, when Kirshen was talking, she, she gave you the QR code for that. The, what that QR code was, was to my documentation about it, because I will never be able to do that twice. But I have every single thing I did in Homebridge to create that is all documented, because I, 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 I did have to wipe my whole Homebridge thing. And I was like, well, I'm OK, because I know I wrote it all down. And um, Fol the reason I, I really like Folga, let me zoom in over here, see if I can do it. Um, so for each step, you can put in a uh, text of what it is, or, you know, what the, the title, and you can put in really advanced notes in here. You can actually, you can embed video into your Folga notes. Um, and then the annotations are fabulous. They're really, really good. It is an Electron app, and it, it, we were, Max and I were talking about Electron apps, and it's just, you feel a little bit of sandpaper on you all the time because of, it is not, not quite great, but uh, Alexei, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. He's a uh, Ukrainian developer. I have literally never met a developer more excited to have someone say, can you make it do this? Can you change the way it does that? He is so excited to help. He's just like, oh, yeah, what else you got, Allison? What else you wanted to do? Can you please send me. I mean, he's got buttons all over. Tell me what else you wanted to do. This guy apologized for making me wait three days once for a response because he was moving his family out of Russia. He apologized to me for that. I mean, this guy is the greatest guy. I love Alexi. He's, ooh, sorry about the mic. Uh, it is, uh, it's 69 euros, so this isn't cheap. But if you find yourself doing a lot of this stuff, it's, it's a pretty good app. Um, the output formats are fantastic. This is a, a PDF. Let's see, is it playing or no? I should have made it consistent whether they played, and I wouldn't have to guess each time. Uh, but this is a PDF that it created. And you can see it's got, it's got a table of contents. I can jump through. It's got every, every steps on a separate page. It's got all my annotations. I can even go to the table of contents and click on things or clickable links to get to the different parts of it. So if you find yourself documenting for other people especially, it's a really good tool. All right. 
If you want to continue leveling up and learning more things that are hard for you, one of the ways you can do that is by going to Screencast Online. And uh, you have a 40% off discount code. Uh, does everybody still have that link? 40% discount code. I mean, this is a crazy, crazy good deal, I believe I said. Um, but you can see uh, people like me and Mike Schmitz and some other folks that are uh, all doing tutorials on things that are uh, really interesting to do on the Mac. All Apple. This is very Apple-centric. But um, the other thing to remember is that everything good starts with podfeed.com. Uh, this is my website. I didn't actually plug it much during the, uh, during the Tiny Tips thing. Um, I do four po have four podcasts. One is in uh, one is kind of a evergreen. The uh, the let's see, let's see, let's see I, can I zoom in on these? Oh yeah, but I won't know where my cursor is. Oh, that's fun. All right, so there's there's four pretty pictures. The first one is the NoCellacast. It's a technology geek podcast with an ever so slight Apple bias. <clears throat> Nailed it at this hour in the morning after karaoke till one thirty. Um, the second one is chit chat across the pond. Well, I was up till 1.30. We were up, but karaoke stopped. Karaoke, okay, karaoke stopped at 10.45. That's fine. Anyway, uh, <laughs> not at all the point of my story, but uh, Chit Chat Across the Pond, uh, I'm excited to announce that that is uh, once a month, that is now Adam Angst is on it with me from Tidbits. Yay. Yeah, I am super excited about that. He has joined the Podfeet family of podcasts. Turned out he wanted to podcast, but he kept thinking, oh, that sounds hard. So he's like, I'll just be on your show. And that worked out because we just have a great time together. And then Programming by Stealth that I mentioned, you really want to stretch your brain. Programming by Stealth, I don't know, we're 169 episodes, I think. There's chunks in there you could do, like if you wanted to learn to use Git. We've got a segment on Git. We've got a segment on JQ. We've got a segment on shell scripting. So there's a bunch of little mini series in there. That's a lot of fun. That's with Bart Bouchouch, which is spelled B-U-S-S-C-H-O-T-S, -S -S Jill. <clears throat> Nobody knows if I said it right, though, huh? <laughs> And then Taming the Terminal is the evergreen one. If you want to learn how to use the terminal on the Mac, this is a 33-part uh, series that we did a few years ago. It's actually a book now, so you, and you can download it for free. It's a PDF. You can get it in Apple Books if you want. Got real pretty cover. Uh, Helma, Helma Vanderlinden took all of the blog posts and programmatically wrote it into a book. And the book, if you get it in Apple Books, it's actually got the audio podcast embedded in the player. Uh, I wanted to put it on Amazon, but they wouldn't let me give it away for free. So we said no. So uh, anyway, it's, it's, a, it's a really great series. If you want to level up your game and learn, and you've always wondered how to use the terminal, it's a great way to learn it. And with that, I think I'm done. Yeah, yeah. Is there any questions for Allison? As yesterday, you can come up to the microphone here and fire away. Looks like we got one or somebody finding a seat. <laughs> yeah. So how do you organize all this stuff? Like, how do you keep track of it all? In terms of, right. in terms of, you know, you have all these keyboard maestro shortcuts. I don't. This is one. Yeah. Uh, keyboard maestro shortcuts. You've got all of this different stuff. Like, is there an index that you keep that's got all of the different links to everything, or because for me it's like, how do you remember which shortcut to run at what time? And stuff like that. Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, I'm not as good as that. If I was uh, uh, channeling my inner uh, Jill McKinley, I would probably put it all in Notion and have have an index to it. Um, I'm I'm a little scattered on where I store stuff. So especially in the in the notes category, I do use Apple Notes for notes. I use Keep It for stuff I really need to keep, where I need to document like stuff I've done on my website. Um, I've got a, a uh, Folga is where all of those guides are. That, that's a database of those guides. Uh, but I also print them out to a, a folder called Tutorials. And then I never remember how to do my Keyboard Maestro macros. So I bring up Keyboard Maestro and I go, OK, where's the one I want to run? Um, I, I uh, am not good at organizing that. That would be an interesting thing to have some sort of relational database to tell me where to look for it. Or not even database, just something. Like, is there, because that's my, I mean, Selfishly, that's my biggest struggle with all of this is like the amount of time it's taken me to try to figure out which automation I've set up under what app does it conflict with the hotkey that's you know, oh, yeah. the default. All of that kind of stuff starts to have a set of diminishing returns, I guess. And and, and mental load too, yeah, right? Exactly. If it's supposed to be helping you but you can't remember what it was, yeah. I'll have to think does anybody have a method for the way they do that that's better I than You see you do what? Oh yeah, I keep notes in Bear too. 
I keep notes in, I think, seven different notes apps, and it's almost as many as we have. I keep trying to get Steve to try, yes. try new apps. Which one? How do you make, how do you make the determination of which note app to use in which situation? Yeah, I, I do have a vague idea of where, what, what I kind of notes. Like the things I actually need to keep or and keep it from reinvented software. Those are the ones that I'm sure, but, but I don't like it as a regular uh, editor. So I, I write all my show notes initially in, in uh, Bear, and then I put them into blog posts. Actually, I, I'll tell you where it is. It's on potfeed.com. <laughs> no, seriously, everything I, everything I, no, but everything I ever knew is in there somewhere, whether I can find it or not. Yeah, it's searchable. Yeah, it, search isn't great, but it, it, it comes sometimes, good. yeah, Steve. Make it short so I can repeat it for the video audience, okay? The, well, on the question that yeah. I just asked, one thing from, that I think about from Jeff yesterday, keep it simple, just keep it small. Steve says, it, keep, keep it simple, keep it small. No, make it sprawling and uncontrollable. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike Schmidt's comment, a uh, uh, quote from, yeah, you can build your own cheat sheets, which are keep says you can, you can build your own cheat sheets. The way he keeps track of all of his better touch tool and text expander and everything is in this dash by Capelli. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. I think it might even be on setup. Might, yeah. might even be on setup. There you go. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> yeah, so Pete gets a commission. All right. It's not George. Good morning. It's a bit for you concerning your notes graphics issue. Yeah? It is possible to resize the picture if you right click on the picture and you can choose between, terribly useful, large and small. I, <laughs> so that, that's better than I thought. Uh, let's see, oh, I need to see that, yeah. Uh, what am I looking for? I'm looking for notes, right? Um, there's a picture. I can't see where my cursor is though. That's not gonna work, I'm not gonna be able to try that. So I tried right clicking and I did not see any options like large and small. Yeah, there's a, it's a, down near the bottom of the contextual menu where it says view, I think there's I wish I knew where my cursor was. Press and hold Oh, there it is. IOS. View as. View as. It's really small though. So, yeah. It's really small. Oh, wait, oh, there's my cursor, I found it. View as. Oh shoot, I did the wrong one. No, you got it right. Did it change? No. Yeah, it got bigger. Oh, it got bigger? Small. Uh-uh. Yeah, it's really small. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Charles, that's a great one. At least it makes the note manageable. Yeah, it does, it does. And I guess since you can change it when you want to zoom in on it, but uh, yeah, it's terrible. I mean, I know Notes has gotten better, but it's still terrible. Feedback at apple.com. Apple. <laughs> <Feedback at> Apple. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other questions? Now I said I'd get us out early and I'm 10 minutes late. All right, thank you everybody.